Yo, so look, you guys, you know, we had some new Doug and Exile news. So we had to tune in, we had to post it, we had to let you know what we think. So look, I'm not going to talk too much. I'm going to get straight to the video. Bonnie Willis gets kicked out of court. So let's see what we got, y'all. We got. This isn't a court case anymore. This isn't a Bonnie Willis hearing. This is a massacre. Welcome to Doug in Exile. I'm Doug Tenaple. This is where the happy Patriots are. Special shout out to the A Dog gang. They, uh, you guys gave me 5,000 subscribers last night. Tons of super chats. So I, I don't deserve it, but thank you. I see you out there. <laughs> but this is Bonnie Willis wishes none of us could see her right now. Now, the judge didn't um rule yet he has to wait a couple weeks to rule but i'm going to show you clips of the hearing and you'll see why fonnie willis just lost she got mass the truth is on the side of the anti fonnie willis case and that girl uh, if i were her i'd be going to another country net right now we're going to start with this i think the same thing too because all the the, the evidence the text stuff they got you guys I think there's more too that we're not seeing. So I would leave if I was her too. Little intro right here. If Miss Wade's, or excuse me, Miss Willis's ultimate goal. Miss Wade, I mean Miss Willis. That's Bonnie Willis's lawyer accidentally calling her Miss Wade. Nathan Wade, her boyfriend. Whoop. Over an hour and a half for argument to be divided amongst themselves if they've, as they've already agreed. And I think we've reached the point where I'd like to hear more of how some of the legal arguments apply to what has already been presented. And it may already be possible for me to make a decision uh, without those needing to be material uh, to that decision. So this is before he even... The whole thing even started he said he's basically got enough material to make a decision now that tells me already just from what we've seen that i believe he's leaning against fonnie willis now by the end of today's hearing which i'll show you she gets demolished now first let's look at her and Nathan Wade, again, just to put you in the courtroom, this is what Fonnie Willis looked like. She's in a lovely red dress. 21, uh, they appeared 35 times. Now, I, I want to make clear to the court, uh, both Miss Willis and Mr. Wade never denied that he had been to that condo before. Um, the, the, the specific testimony that was uh, elicited by Miss Willis and Mr. Wade was that he, never, he had never laid his head, uh, was the direct quote, um, at, at, at that condo, which... These records don't prove that he laid his head anywhere. If you were to believe. That's the sound of her lawyer, and he is really obnoxious sounding. Um, Nathan Wade looks kind of sweaty, and Fonnie Willis looks cute, cool. Look, look at everyone on the screen, man. I'm telling you, it's over. She can't lie anymore. Was a cucumber, by the way. She left before, just before the whole thing finished, but they gave each side a couple hours to make their case, just to sh put your head in the room. Now we're going to get to... This isn't Steven Sadow, who did also mop the floor with this case. This is the other um, defense attorney for Trump's side coming in and just sh going into the state and just saying, this is why Fonnie Willis is completely compromised. This whole case is demolished. Which requires impartially and without fear or favor discharge my duties as district attorney and take only my lawful compensation, so help me God. The general rule on conflicts of interest for lawyers is in Rule of Professional Conduct 1.7. And we all know, it's all drummed into us, that we cannot have a conflict of interest. And if we do, we have to withdraw or we will be disqualified. So all he's done right there is he just read out Fonnie Willis's oath as district attorney. Now he's going to go step by step and show how she has breached. So at the same time, I'm, I'm surprised with all this going on, but I'm trying to absorb some of the knowledge because I caught on the case kind of late. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to get as much knowledge as I can from Doug. Reached it all with conflict of interest. The basic idea is that a conflict of interest impairs the lawyer's independent professional judgment. That's the test of a conflict and whether it can be weighed and whether it's disqualifying. And th that conflict is not just financial. It can be any conflict that impairs your independent professional judgment. And you see that in McLaughlin v. Payne. The court asked what was a personal interest for pers purposes of disqualification. 
<clears throat> it's anything that impairs professional judgment. That's reflected in the ABA <coughs> standards that were quoted uh, by Mr. Merchant, <clears throat> which list uh, the prosecutor's personal, political, financial, professional, business, property, or other interests or relationships, and that's really embedded in the prosecutor's oath to act impartially. Okay, she's already conflicted politically. By the way, you know who else is conflicted politically? Alvin Bragg, Letitia James, Judge Engeron, Chutkin, but especially Letitia James. The things they've said out of court prove they're, they're uh, conflicted. They have gone against their own oath. And the earlier disqualification order by Judge McBurney was based on political interests, not financial. <clears throat> what my colleagues have described as forensic misconduct is also cognizable as a conflict of interest based on that footnote in the Williams case. The root of all of the problems that we see in this court right now is a conflict of interest arising from their individual personal interests in perpetuating and concealing their relationship. That's the original sin from which all of the other problems flow. The first proof that they're con is that they're concealing something with their relationship. There's, that's his first point. There are six different actual conflicts of interest in this case, any one of which warrants disqualification, but collectively, practically compelling. First, the financial conflict that's already been covered. <clears throat> Second, the... Exactly, especially the financial conflict that is really what's going to be looked into. Well, it already has, of course, but that's telling you everything's going to get wrapped up the right Personal way. Personal ambition, political ambition. There, third, there's a dovetailed or complementary pattern <clears throat> of deceit and concealment of the relationship and the money. Fourth, the speech at the church. That her whole tack in that church testimony was itself a political action, not a religious action. She did it. That's a conflict. Fifth, the motion for protective order that the DA filed <clears throat> in Mr. Wade's divorce case. Sixth, the way the state has conducted the defense of this motion to disqualify, especially the hearing. So even this hearing itself is going to end up being part of the trial because Nathan Wade lies on the stand and the district attorney is the one whose job it is to go after him. And she sat there and watched him. He's lying to defend her. So now she's using the state. It's, it is all so many layers of evil. The, the person who's supposed to be going after Nathan Wade and Terrence Bradley lying is the district attorney of Fulton County, Georgia, but it's Fonnie Willis. That's who they're lying about. We have a county code Ax. section that flatly prohibits gifts from contractors, period. We have, by analogy, the federal bribery statute, which has a threshold of $5,000, 18 U.S.C. 666. The court asked about burdens and inferences. The court can draw a negative inference from the state's failure to produce evidence to support the invisible magic cash balancing theory. The invisible magic cash balancing theory is talking about her accounting of stuffing <laughs> cash in her mattress. There were two contracts for Mr. Wade executed after they acknowledged the relationship began. Each one of them afflicted uh, or conflicted under county and common law. The second conflict is her political ambition for which he was previously chastised by Judge McBurney. And that's also present in this book. The inside flap of this book says that they were given, quote, exclusive access to thousands of secret documents, emails, text messages Wait. present in this book. The inside flap of this book says that they were given, quote, exclusive access to thousands of secret documents, emails, text messages, and audio recordings. The court has twice denied defense motions to unseal special purpose grand jury materials. She helped herself to get the glory of this book. <laughs> to wrap she, it up. She brags in the flap of her book that she has access to secret emails that the court won't allow the Trump defense to have. That's a conflict of interest in the front flap of the Fonnie Willis book. On the DA, under which she has three obligations. She has to go to the county commission to get approval to pay him like she did. She cannot accept gifts from a prohibited source. She has to disclose the gifts that she received. She evaded all of those requirements. Boom, boom, boom. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Section 2-69 of the county code prohibits gifts from prohibited sources, which he was. There is no boyfriend exception. His part in the pattern of concealment 
It's a story you see in many divorce cases. The husband is hiding things from his wife. How much money he's making, the other woman, and what he's spending on the other woman. And he got on that stand, lied in his interrogatories, and he got on the stand and he lied about lying in the interrogatories. And the lawyers for the DA, the DA's office, they just sat there and let him do it. They did nothing to correct obviously perjured testimony. In and of itself, that warrants disqualification of every one of them. When he perjured himself and lied on the stand to do something about it, and they did nothing, he goes, that alone disqualifies the entire office. He's got Exactly. Her. Judge McAfee can't do it. Wait, the, the, it gets even stronger. I've only got one, two, three, four. I see five more clips. It gets even stronger, guys. The reason they lied and covered it up was to avoid the trouble they're in right now. That served their personal interests to the detriment of their public duties as prosecutors. The last category is the conduct of the defense of this hearing. <clears throat> there were a lot of objections made based on attorney-client privilege during Mr. Bradley's testimony. Most of those objections were made by the state. But the privilege being asserted does not belong to the state. It belongs to Mr. Wade. That shows that the DA's office is serving the personal interests of the DA and Mr. Wade in carrying out further concealment and cover-up of their relationship and not the cause of justice they are sworn to serve. That is a conflict of interest. The state is corrupt in this case. Even in this court case, that's the biggest thing. My but something that's going on notice is this, we've been knowing this the whole entire time. Now the public is starting to see it. Kathy has to look at, he's going, in my own court. Now, if McAfee sides with Bonnie Willis, he becomes part of endorsing the corrupt state. It's a continuation of the wrongful pattern of concealment and cover-up that they've engaged in since the beginning. But now they've enlisted the entire office in the enterprise. So that's going to disqualify the whole office on the Trump case. McAfee could go all the way and say, this whole thing's filthy rotten to the core. In the written response to the motion to disqualify, they said... This is crazy, y'all. I'm trying to look at what the and guy was speaking. To be absolutely clear. There is no evidence that D.A. Willis derived any financial benefit from Mr. Wade. That's on page 15. Flat out false. Ten lawyers in this case put their name on that, starting with the D.A. So throw another log on the bonfire of conflicts of interest. Throw another log on the bonfire of conflicts of interest. Ten lawyers signed the document that said Bonnie Willis got no financial help. They're all corrupt. corrupt. He's calling all, corrupt. all of them out. By the way, this should tell you that Georgia, they have a little beating heart of a good legal man there and probably a good judge. You know what doesn't have a good judge? New York. That's exactly. why Angeron and Letitia James, their corruption goes all the way up. They don't have a Judge McCaffrey mm -hmm. to stop it. They don't even have this lawyer to stop it. Neither does Washington, D.C., where Chutkin's going after Trump. The good news is Fulton County, Georgia, if you're watching my Georgian people, there's still some good Republicans there in office and working to save the state from this corruption. We'll let this guy wrap up. Think of the message that would be sent if they were not disqualified. If this is tolerated, we'll get more of it. This office is a global laughing stock because of their conduct. They should be disqualified and the case should be dismissed. They should be disqualified. The case should be dismissed. They are, Bonnie Willis is a global laughing stock, guys. It went from just being in Fulton County, Georgia, to now mm -hmm. the, uh, the DA, Bonnie Willis, who was trying to go after Trump, just became a global worldwide laughing stock. Give me a sub, give us a like, let us know what you think. I've been telling you guys, this is, this is nothing but corruption and it's been that the whole entire time. So I got two more videos coming out for you guys. Like, comment, subscribe if you're new. And as always, let me know if react to you guys. We are out. I'm Doug in exit.